So hello and welcome back to the Computer Lab. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Unify G4 Protect doorbell. Now this is part of the Unify Protect range, which basically means that it needs a hard drive installed at your property or business, now, something like the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, like this one here, and it records all the information through the device that is connected onto something that is based internally at your own property. Now you can do that with the UDM Pro. The cheapest way to do it is usually using the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus like this. However, this is not uh, PoE powered. You have to power it via a transformer. So if you've got a transformer already installed at your house or property, uh, then they are a, a great addition. But however, just be aware that you can't just connect it to the transformer without having something to control this particular doorbell obviously if you're already invested and you've got the cameras installed things like these devices here and you're powering them with a poe switch then that is great you just add this in with a transformer that is supplied this is the uk version or the european version i believe in the states they didn't actually supply the transformer initially i don't know if they are doing it now it retails for about 200 pound but like i said be aware that you can't just connect it to a transformer and expect it to work you will already need to be invested almost certainly with a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus on your network so you can adopt this into it. I will be going into details and showing you how to adopt it into the Protect environment. Also be looking at the picture quality uh, and see what you get because there is a pro version now of this which has the same uh, picture, it's just got a slightly different LCD at the bottom I believe uh, because I haven't uh, managed to get my hands on one yet. Again, if Unify are watching it, then please do contact me if you'd like me to have a look at review at the UK version of the G4 Pro. This is the Unify G4 standard doorbell. Uh, and just before we go any further into the video, if I do put any links in the description box below, they will be an affiliate link, uh, which basically means I make a small cut in the profit if you buy through that link. I have purchased this with my own money, so it'll be an honest look and a review of the G4 Unify Protect doorbell. So without any further ado, let's have a look and see what you get for your money. Okay, so let's have a look and see what you get for your money in the box. Let's get it opened up. Uh, so like I said, this is the UK version of the G4 doorbell. Um, you can get the European version and the Pro version. It's going to be really good to see as well when we get uh, that version released. Let's get the cellophane off. Like most of the Unify ubiquitous stuff, it comes well boxed, a bit like uh, the way that Apple boxes stuff up with their product range. So let's get the doorbell out and let's have a look at it. Um, comes in this little preformed plastic holder inside this cardboard box. Feels quite weighty in the hand, so it feels nice uh, build quality. Let's just get out of the way and we'll do some measurements. So I haven't got a Nest uh, Hello doorbell to hand, but to give you sort of an idea, I'll put the dimensions, uh, comparable sizes up in the left-hand corner there so you can see them. But uh, the Unify G4 doorbell is just short of 2 inch in width and just short of 5 inch in height. So like most of these smart doorbells, it feels um, it can look quite imposing when it's on the door compared to sort of a normal doorbell. Uh, and just before we have a look further in the box, let's have a look at the rear of the G4 doorbell and see what we have. So you can see there we've got the two terminals for connecting the power up. Um, you've got a reset button at the top. Uh, just there uh, and also there's a slit in the bottom for where your wires can run out. You also get this small quick start guide, that black label there, which you can scan in with your iPhone and it just talks you through the installation process. Uh, this is the um, mounting bracket uh, and it comes with a little mini spirit level um, that you remove once you have installed it. So if you are hanging it on your door, obviously you'd hang the bracket on first, then the doorbell just hooks over them, two little hooks at the top. Uh, like so and then it clicks into position obviously I'm not going to click it in position at this point um, but you get the idea you can mount that on your wall with this little spirit level and then click your doorbell on once you've got your wires fed through so next up in the box is the wedge for mounting your unified G4 doorbell at a slight angle. Now this is a 20 degree wedge and just allows you to get a different, slightly different field of view uh, by angling the doorbell, maybe away from a corner of a wall so your uh, infrared blaster doesn't uh, bounce back off the wall or if you just want a slightly different angle on it. So that's a nice little touch. Most of these doorbells come with this wedge nowadays. 
but incidentally, the field of view for the doorbell is, I believe, 138 degrees. So it's got quite a wide field of view already. Now, if you are connecting a chime, which I am not, but if you are connecting a chime, you will need to use this chime uh, connector, which is also included in the box. Uh, and you can see on the drawing on the left, uh, that is how you need to wire it if you are including a chime into your system. You also get two small uh, quick connect wire connectors which just screw onto your terminals on the back of your Unify G4 doorbell and just makes it easier to connect your transformer to your doorbell. So on the right hand side, this is the, sort of the requirements that uh, Ubiquita Unify say that you need. In the box, you also get a transformer and I will put a slight uh, better close up of this uh, transformer that you get included with the UK or European version um, a bit later on in the video. I'm just struggling to get the camera just to focus slightly on it there. But this is the one that comes in it. You'll notice there's only two screws at the top. Some of the um, standard doorbell transformers have all four screws, so you can change the rating. Um, Unify have only included one, so you can't go wrong. You just connect it to them two wires. So there's the close-up that I promised. So you can see it's a 16 volt, 15 VA uh, transformer that um, Unify include in the box. So to get this thing set up, I'm just going to connect it up to a loose um, switch wire with mains on the underside. Normally you'd mount it in a DIN rail and if you've watched in my Google one you'll notice that on the left hand side there I installed the Google Nest uh, on a DIN rail next to my consumer unit uh, and just obviously had it fed on there. Just for this bench test I'm just going to connect it up as I would do anything when you're uh, bench testing so obviously got it unplugged at the moment. I'm putting the live wires into the bottom of the transformer. Obviously no power on at the moment, as you can see with the plug just led down there. And like I said, this is a, a switched um, live wire anyway. So um, once I get it, do get it connected on, I've got the option to switch it on and off with the switch. So just putting my um, neutral and my live in the bottom of the transformer. Like I said, it's unplugged at the moment. And now all we need is a piece of bell wire to connect from the top of the bell transformer into the Unify G4 doorbell. So I'm just using a standard bit of uh, UK bell wire uh, to connect uh, into my transformer and then going to put it into the two connectors on the back side of the uh, doorbell. So I'm just going to make these off just to connect it up. Obviously I'm not spending a lot of time here just making sure they're tied or anything but I do need to make sure that they are in the uh, relevant terminals safely so just put these two in like so and like I said it's only got the two uh, the two screws so you can't go wrong um, you can only put it into them too if you're used to installing doorbells you'll know that some of the um, especially in the UK and European markets they have a whole range that you can select by selecting different wires into different positions on the bell transformer Okay, so uh, obviously connected on to the transformer now, just need to connect into the rear of the Unify G4 doorbell. And like I said earlier, if I was putting a chime in, I would use the chime connector. And I'm not, so I do not need that at this point. So just need to put these two into the rear of the, and these, if you are doing this on a door, then obviously this would make it a lot easier uh, because you could connect the wires directly onto it in theory, but these two little quick connectors that they supply, are just handy just to screw onto the two screws like so, as you can see in the video. Uh, and then you can feed them. If you were doing this on a door and doing it live, then you would just pass them through the brackets, depending on which brackets you're mounting, you just pass them through like so, and then you can click it in position and uh, with one hand while also just entering the transformer wires into the quick connector. So I'm just gonna push these into the, uh, like I said, into the quick connectors. I'm still unplugged at the moment, no power on. Uh, so I'm just gonna push these in uh, like so and they're only, they're only about five uh, mil long this bell wire just enough just to go in uh, so there's no bell wire showing and now I'm getting ready to put some power onto the unit so just to quickly go over before we put some power on the doorbell uh, we'll just quickly go on the setup so on the left hand side we've got our power coming in into the transformer um, coming out of the transformer along the bell wire and into our G4 uh, Unify G4 doorbell so yours will be a longer length, but anyway, let's get to the bench on the other view and then let's get some power on to the Unify G4 doorbell. So I've got my switch in front of me here. We're not powered on yet. So I'm going to put some power on like so. And then we should see on the doorbell something happening and we've got the Unify logo 
prompt coming up. So I'm going to open up the Unify Protect app on my phone. You can do this on your PC as well through the um, the computer um, browser by logging into your unify.ui environment. I'm just going to do it on the uh, iPhone because it's just easier. So you see there, I've not touched anything. I've just gone into my Unify Protect on the iPhone or on the app, and it is straight away found, new device found, um, and it's looking at that through Bluetooth. So it can see the connection through Bluetooth. If you're not, if you're new to Unify Protect, you can download the app, which is what it's telling me to do on the front of the doorbell uh, on the little screen at the front there. Okay, so we're going to click on the add button. Now I've already got a couple of cameras on this particular setup, uh, which you'll, we will get to see a bit later on in the video. So the next stage is uh, the Unify doorbell is saying, okay, how would you like to connect this up? Like I said, it's not connected with the network cable in any way, so it's going to connect through Wi-Fi. I'm connecting mine to a 5 gig um, channel that I have uh, in the office here. And it is now, obviously took the phone away just while I put the password in there. Uh, and it is now uh, trying to connect the doorbell to the Wi-Fi. And you can see on the front of the doorbell also it says connecting to Wi-Fi as the app is spinning round. So there we go, it's set up complete, but now I would expect it to be do an update. So let's just see what it does. So I've got the welcome screen. And then I should be able to scroll to the bottom of my views. Uh, I've got the, you see the one just above where that camera lost power, that's just one I've just disconnected because I have that camera in a place that I don't want to broadcast on the video. So you see there the one at the bottom, that is the actual doorbell, the one that says camera updating. Uh, and that's just the last view it got of me recording this video um, before it jumped into the updating state. So at this point it might take it a while to do this, can take anything up to sort of five minutes. Uh, and you'll see on the screen hopefully... You can usually tap on the camera at this point and it will tell you how long it's got left to do. Oh, there we go. We've got something happening on the actual doorbell itself. Updating firmware with the uh, usual suspect of a bar going across the screen. I spend my life watching bars and circle bars go across screens and circles spin round. Anyway, there we go. So now it's done part of an update by the looks of it and it is now restarting. And usually when they restart, it then applies... Um, some more of the update as well so we'll just let it restart the actual uh, doorbell and just while this uh, update is going on it's uh, probably a good time just to cover some of the uh, specs for the Unify G4 doorbell so the actual doorbell itself is IPX4 rated uh, for weatherproofing the sensor in the actual camera is a 5 megabyte uh, CMOS sensor with a fixed focal length. Like I said earlier, it is a 138 degrees field of view on the horizontal. Vertical is 114 degrees field of view and the depth is 155 degrees. It's got a night mode, so basically that means it's got a built-in infrared LED illumination uh, with an AR uh, cut filter in it. Now, video compression is H.264, which most of the cameras are. And I know we got H.265 now, but this doorbell, Unify G4 doorbell, is H.264 with a resolution of 1600 by 1200. 30 frames per second is the maximum frames per second it does. Uh, it's got a processor in it, which is a quad-core ARM Cortex A53 based chip with a memory of 512 megabytes uh, built into the camera. Runs on Unify Protect and it connects to your network using 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Uh, it also has the Bluetooth side which you saw earlier. But for actually streaming the video footage it uses Wi-Fi. It's not connected and doesn't have any way at this point to connect via Ethernet. Uh, so the Cat6 or Cat5e or whatever it is you've got running in your office or home. So it's using Wi-Fi to transfer the information. Uh, just getting back to the video, you can see there estimated time remaining for the update uh, is four minutes up there. And on the front uh, of the actual doorbell itself, it's got this sliding bar going across saying updating firmware. I mean, that's an estimated time. It usually is quicker than that. Uh, just to finish off on the spec, yeah, so it's um, a flash memory support of 256 megabytes as well. It's got a maximum power consumption of 12 VA. The power requirements, according to the spec sheet, is 16 to 24 VAC, um, dash 20 VA, dash 50 to 60 hertz. Uh, it's got a LED on the front for activity, factory reset button on the rear, 
um, and an operating temperature of minus 10 to 40 Celsius or 14 to 104 Fahrenheit. So, um, yeah, overall, I quite like some of this. I like the specs that they put on for these cameras. Uh, they sort of sit them in the mid range, especially the doorbell. I mean, it's well priced. This It's about the 180, 200 pound mark. Uh, so overall, compared to sort of the ring doorbells, uh, the Eufy ones, the um, Google Nest. I think it's comparable to all them. The beauty of these is that if you've got the um, Protect hardware already installed at your property or business and you're recording all that information to the, like, so the UDM Pro, for example, you just put this doorbell in and it saves all the video footage to that hard drive straight away. Okay, anyway, so let's get back to the video because we can see the update has now finished and it, we now got a welcome screen on the little screen underneath the doorbell button. Uh, so hopefully we're going to be able to see the camera. Uh, now, the actual, sometimes when uh, they do these updates, you sometimes have to just sort of close the app and go back in just to refresh things. So I might just give it a tap in a second. I'm just going to leave it a little bit longer, just see if it comes on. If it doesn't, I'm just going to back out. Uh, let's back out and then go back. So, so there we go. Yeah, so I haven't refreshed the screen. So I just backed out and then gone back in. Uh, and it's now recording. So And as you can see, you can see what the screen looks like there. Nice and clear picture. Obviously, I'm in, inside the office there recording. You could see it was showing up well. So if I push the doorbell here, uh, we get this prompt that on your screen that somebody is ringing the Unified G4 doorbell at the computer lab. Somebody is at the doorbell. So it's just prompting me as soon as you push the button. And on the front of the little, I think it's an IPS screen or OLED screen, on the front of the actual D4 doorbell, it is flashing ringing. And my phone is also making the ringing noise. So you can see me there as I've gone to pick up on the alert and we can now talk to the other person by pushing the start talking button or we can send them a small prompt so you can see this is a nice little feature they've put in you can have this um default one leave package at the door by pushing that there or you can change it uh, to your own uh, message if you want so for example let me tap something in here i'll just put hi at the computer lab means no sense for a front doorbell but at least you can see what it does so you can see there got your own unique message that you can send and you can show that always if you want it always on there so you could have your address on there your number of the house um or you can have it shown for five minutes you've got an, an option in this menu here that you can change so i'm not going to cover the all the menus on this doorbell because it would just make this video too long and if you are interested in looking at that just hit me up in the comments below and i might do one for the rest of the settings so quickly just showing you the night mode there is a slight light for a window on my left here but apart from that it was quite pitch black where i was sat and you can see it is really quite clear so just before i wrap things up i just wanted to take a quick look at the front of the camera and just go over the overall frontage so we've got the lens at the front here and then just directly underneath the lens, you've got your microphone holes and these two holes are there. And then you've got the bell push button with the uh, light around it. And then just directly underneath the button, you have the IR blaster for your night mode. Then you've got the screen underneath, which we were looking at earlier. Uh, and the screen is motion activated, so when you walk in front, it will show up. You've also got the speaker for your two-way communication, so you can talk to your person at the door through the microphones and then you've got the led light on the underside here which i've not had working yet um to prove it works but like i said when you walk in front of the doorbell you should see the screen come on there we go welcome it is motion activated so there we go that's my review and quick install of the unify g4 doorbell i hope you found this video helpful if you did please do smash the like button also hit me up with any comments below uh, they are always appreciated and please do subscribe to the computer lab on youtube and i'll catch you in the next video